Hey, this is Math 8, Unit 4, Lesson 9, called When Are They the Same? We're going to use equations to think about different situations. So the first activity says, which would you choose? If you're babysitting, would you rather charge $5 for the first hour and then $8 for each additional hour? Or would you rather charge $15 for the first hour and $6 for each additional hour? And so the lesson of today's focus is called when are they the same? And so what we can see here is that we're actually having two equations that are going to be adding more money to how much you're making at a different rate. So for the first equation, what happens is you're making $5 at the start, and then every hour you work, you're going to get $8. So we could write that as 5 plus 8 times H, H being the number of hours you work. In this rate, way over here, you get $15 to start, and then you get an additional $6 for each hour you work. If we wanted to see at what point they are the same, we could actually set the two equations equal to each other to find out when the hours would be equal. So we set it up like this, and we solve for h. So to do that, we're going to subtract 6h from this side. So we have 2h over here, and we can subtract 5 from this side, and we have 10 over here. We divide both sides by 2, and we find out that h equals 5. And what that means is that at five hours into the job, they're going to have the same amount of money. Okay, so after, once they worked five hours, they're going to have an equal amount of money. So before the five hours, though, the $15 person is going to have a little bit more because they started with some more. But once you go over five hours, then the first person over here who makes $8 an hour will start to earn more than the second person. So it really depends on what, how long you're going to work. If you're going to work for less than five hours, then you probably want to go with a $15 uh, charge. All right, let's take a look at the next activity here. Lesson two on water tanks. Again, similar idea, except now we're, instead of talking about money, you're looking at two water tanks. And you have the water in two tanks um, is taken, the amount of water is measured every five minutes as shown in the table. Here's tank one and here's tank two. We have to describe what is happening in each tank. And you can draw a picture and say it verbally or write a few sentences. And so when we look at tank one, we can see that at the beginning it has 25, and it seems to be increasing as it as time goes on. Whereas tank two starts at 1,000 liters and seems to be decreasing. So we would notice here that this is an increase, and this one here is a decrease in terms of the overall amount of water in the tank. Use the table to estimate when the tanks will have the same amount of water. Well, we can see here at about 20 minutes, we're, they're both in the 600 range, right about there. So we would say probably somewhere between 15 and 20, they're gonna be equal to each other. Somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes. Now, realistically, we're probably gonna be closer to 20 than anything else because that's about where that's gonna land, right about there, okay? <clears throat> And that's our idea there. Well, a couple things I noticed when I look at this here, to move from 25 to 175, it's an increase of 150. And going here, we're decreasing by 100 liters, right? So there's definitely an increase and a decrease of a certain amount. Now this is happening every five minutes. So if we divided 150 by uh, five, we'd come up with 30, right? So tank one seems to be increasing by about 30 liters per minute. Okay, I'm gonna write a little L like that. Whereas this one here, we divide this by five, 100 by five, and we end up with 20, which means it's decreasing about 20 liters per minute. And that's just looking at our numbers that are, are given in this table. So we move down to number three. It says the amount of water in liters in tank one after T minutes is 30T plus 25, right? So there's our 30, that's our rate, our increase, 30 plus a time, or times a time, plus a starting point of 25, which makes sense for that one. Take two, it's gonna be negative 20, that's our decrease, so we would say negative 20 instead of a positive 20 at the top here, right? It's a negative 20 since we're decreasing as our rate, plus 1,000 it started with. To find out when they're gonna be equal, we set those two equations equal to each other, so we would say 30t <laughs> plus 25, equals negative 20t plus 1,000. We'll add 20 to both, 20t to both sides. So now we have 50t, and we'll subtract 25 from both sides, and set that equal to 975. When we divide 975 by 50, we discover that t is gonna be equal to 
19.5. And that's the amount, the time at which our two things are going to be equal. So at 19.5 minutes, we're going to have an equal amount of water in the two tanks there. Let's take a look at activity number three. In activity three, we have a building with two elevators that are going above and below ground. At a certain time of day, the travel time it takes elevator A to reach a height H in meters is that amount. For elevator B to reach it is that amount. <laughs> so what is the height of each elevator at that time? Okay, so to do this here, what we wanna do is we're gonna take the first equation and we're gonna set it equal to zero. Okay, so zero equals 0.8H plus 16. And we're going to solve for, uh, solve for h. So we subtract 16, so we have negative 16 equals 0.8h. We divide by 0 0.8, divide by 0.8. We find out that h is going to equal negative 20. So for elevator a, it's going to be um, at 20 feet, in this case here, um, below ground. For elevator b, we're going to have negative 0.8h plus 12 equals 0. And we solve for h, so it's going to be equal to negative that equals negative that. We divide by negative 0.8, and h is going to equal, in this case here, 15. So for elevator b, we're at 15 above, and elevator a, we're at 20, um, 20 meters below. <laughs> How long would it take each elevator to reach the ground level? Well, ground level, that's going to be our height. Ground level means that our height equals zero. So when the height equals zero, 0 0.8 times zero plus 16 equals simply 16 for A. And for B, zero, negative 0 0.8 times H plus 12 is gonna equal, that's zero, is gonna equal 12. So A is 16 and B is 12. If the two elevators toward, travel towards one another, at what height do they pass each other? and how long would that take? So that passing each other idea is when are they gonna be equal to one another? So we'll do 0.8H plus 16 equals negative 0.8H plus 12. So we're gonna add 0.8H over here. So we end up with 1.6H equals, subtract 16, subtract 16, we have minus four. I divide, minus 4 by 1.6 and we find out that h is now going to be equal to negative 2.5 so they're going to pass each other at a height of uh, negative 2.5 meters is where they're going to pass each other out okay now this fourth question here says if you're in an underground parking lot 14 meters below ground which elevator would be true first this is like the zero question up here number two so we just plug that value in Here's for A, we have 0.8 times 14, uh, and below ground, so let's make that negative 14, sorry, plus 16. And for B, we would say it's negative 0.8 times negative 14 plus 12. So 0.8 times negative 14 is negative 11.2 plus 16. That's gonna be a total of 4.8, right? That's how long it would take you, 4.8 seconds there. And over here, we're going to say negative 0.8 times negative 14 is 11.2 plus 12, and that's going to be 23.2 seconds. Because we wanted to get you get you the fastest, we want the shortest amount of time. So that would be elevator A is going to reach you in the shortest amount of time. Okay. So let's take a look then at our our homework for today. Cell phone plan A costs $70 per month and it comes with a free phone. Cell phone plan B is $50 per month but does not come with a phone. If you buy the $500 phone and choose plan B, how many months until your cost is the same? Okay, so plan A is simply $70 a month. Plan B is $50 a month plus 
the $500 it costs to get the phone to start with. To find out when they're the same, we're going to just solve this for m. So we subtract 50m, subtract 50m, and if 20m equals 500, we divide both sides by 20 to say that that's going to be equal to 25. And so 25 months is the break even point, at which point now you have paid the same amount of money and it takes 25 months for that to work out. Number two, Hi and Han are biking the same direction on the same path. Han is riding at a constant speed of 16 miles per hour. Write an expression shows how many miles Han has gone after two hours. Well, Han is traveling at he's traveling at 16 miles every hour. We can call the hours time. So expression be 16t. Priya started riding half an hour before Han. If Han has been riding for t hours, how long has Priya been riding? So in this case here, we're going to take the hours that she's been riding plus half an hour. Right? That's going to be what Priya is going to run. So it's a time plus and half an hour more. Okay, because she started before Han there. Now it says she's riding at a constant rate of 12 miles per hour, and he was going 16 miles per hour. Okay, so write an expression that shows how many miles Priya has gone after Han has been riding for two hours. That expression would look something like this. We say 12 miles per hour times what she's doing is t plus a half. Okay, so <coughs> we can then find out when they meet by saying those equal to each other. In this case here, we would say 16t is equal to 12 times t plus a half. We distribute, distribute. So 16t equals 12t plus 6. We subtract 12t, subtract 12t, so 4t equals 6. And we divide by 4, so, so t is going to equal 3 over 2, or 1.5. Um, hours, right? So in this case here, we'd say one and a half um, hours is at what point they are going to meet. Okay, and that's it. All right. Now, so one and a half hours. Sorry, that's fun. Now I'm gonna plug that back in. Sorry, real quick to Priya, because Priya is actually the t value plus a half. So 1.5 plus a half is actually equal to two. So sorry about that. I wanna make sure we add that in there. So our real answer is gonna be two because it's Han plus a half an hour. They'll meet in two hours, right there. Okay, number three. Which story matches the equation? Negative six plus three X equals two plus four X. All right, and so I want you to just go ahead and read that one. I'm gonna let you do that one on your own real quick. And so you can read both of these stories and see which one matches that equation. Look at the words they use and see if you can solve that one there. I'm gonna to move to number four. Number four. For what value do the expressions two thirds x plus two and four thirds x minus six have the same value? Well, to find that out, we have to make them equal to each other. So we'll <laughs> say two thirds x plus two equals four thirds x minus six. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of the fractions <coughs> to do that, I'll multiply everything by 3, okay? So this times 3 becomes 2x, this times 3 becomes 6, this times 3 becomes 4x, and this times 3 becomes negative 18. Now we can solve for what's left. We can subtract 2x here, we can add 18 there, and we have 24 equals 2x. And to solve for x, we divide by 2, and x is going to equal 12. All right, well, let's turn over to the back side. Take a couple more before we wrap up the lesson. Okay. Decide whether each equation is true for all one or no values of x. All right, in this case here, we have various values of x there and whole numbers there. We would say there's gonna be one solution based upon what we can see, how the way the equation is set up, the structure there. Here, we have 9x minus 18 equals 7x plus 1, 5. Again, different values of x, different whole numbers, we're gonna end up with one solution there. For this one, we have 9x 
plus 6 minus 2x. The 9x and the 2x are going to combine to make a 7x plus 6, which equals what we have there. So because those are equal, we're going to have um, all values there are going to work. So we actually don't have any there or no value in this problem. Let's look at number 6. It says solve each equation, explain your reasoning. Okay. So first of all, we have 3d plus 16 equals a negative 2 times 5 minus 3d. Let's distribute, distribute. So we write 3d plus 16 equals negative 10 plus 6d. I'm going to subtract 3d, subtract 3d. So I have 3d left on this side. I'm going to add 10, so I have 26 on this side. And we're going to divide by 3, divide by 3. And my answer simply is d equals 26 over 3. For b, we're going to do 2k minus 3 times 4 minus k equals 3k plus 4. We're going to distribute, distribute. So 2k minus 12 plus, be careful there, negative and negative, plus 3k equals 3k plus 4. So 2 and 3 is 5k minus 12 equals 3k plus 4. So we're going to subtract 3k here, end up with a 2k. We're going to add 12k here to end up with a 16. We're going to divide by 2, and k is equal to 8. All right? And then this one right here, letter C. Don't have a lot of space, so I'm going to take letter C. I'm going to write it up here. Okay? So we have 3y minus 6 over 9 equals 4 minus 2y over minus 3. What I can do is I can multiply everything by 9, both sides by 9. That'll clear that to get 3y minus 6. And then 9 divided by negative 3 is negative 3 times 4 minus 2y. We'll distribute. We have negative 12 plus 6y equals 3y minus 6. And we can subtract 3y. And we have 3y left over here. We can add 12 over there. So we're left with 6. So 3y equals 6. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. And y equals 2. So a little bit quick there, I know. But that becomes your solution for number 6c. And finally, let's take a look at the last one. Using a rigid transformation, what takes it from A to B? So with a rigid, we're not going to change the shape. We're not going to change what it looks like. We're going to keep all the dimensions the same. So to make that work, the best way to make that work is going to be with a rotation. And we want to say 180 degree rotation around the center. And our center is going to be 0, 0, the origin. So we're going to take this and rotate it 180 degrees, and then I'll make it line up right there. All right, that's it for the day. Hope you have a great one. We'll see you next time.